So I'm fucking this one up because I'm gonna okay, tell you a joke <laughs> that that DL Hewley said, right? Okay. And he was talking about Spike Lee being mad at uh, Django, right? Mm -hmm. And he said Spike Lee said that his ancestors would be embarrassed if he knew if they knew that he watched Django. And he said, "Shit, nigga, my my ancestors is, is embarrassed." Because I was in Soul Plane. <laughs> that's right. I was too. Right. I was too. That's why I bring it up. Because I'm waiting for Soul Plane too. Fuck <laughs> that. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back to another fantastic episode of The People's Party. I am your host, Talib Kweli. This is my lovely and talented co-host, Jasmine Lee. Give it up, everybody. What's Ooh. up, everybody? Jasmine. Yeah? Today is very interesting. Uh, we're gonna have a good time. Uh, you're a comedian. I am. Uh, we have a comedian on the show today. This guy is a friend of mine. Um, he's been a part of the American comedy landscape for quite some time. Mm -hmm. I'm talking years, you know what I'm saying? He's like a workhorse, road warrior, comic, but you've also seen him in some of your favorite TV shows. You've seen him in some of your favorite movies. He's one of my favorite stand-up comedians working right now. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Godfrey and I. Yo, yo, what up? What up? You ready? I'm ready. I, I, I was warming up. I was doing a little warm up. Ready? You shadow box. You warm now? I'm warm as hell. Sweat. Okay. Okay. Got the interview pre-sweat. <laughs> <laughs> What's good? What's good, Godfrey? I like. I like. You like the yeah. set? Set is beautiful. Have you met Jasmine before? Hey, Jasmine. Hey, your Godfrey, fellow comedian. I never met her before. I don't think. So. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But you know, the circuit is so big. Yeah. It's really I've small though. It's it's small and big, but a lot of there's a lot. I've been doing this twenty comedy. something years, mm -hmm. so you know. Right, you've met a lot of comics. Yup, you yeah. know. So I've been around a minute. It takes about about fifteen to twenty to get it right. Mm. So Jeez. how long yeah, have you yeah, been yeah, doing yeah. it? Uh, five years, January yeah. twenty sixth. Fi you're a five year old. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what Seinfeld told me. I remember right. I, I was in his documentary called Comedian, mm -hmm. and. Uh, at the time, Seinfeld had come back. Off of Seinfeld, he started doing stand-up again. That's mm -hmm. why I respect the guy, because he's a billionaire. Mm -hmm. But he still takes the pen and the pad. Right. He doesn't take it for granted. In the, in the one with uh, Eddie in the Cars with Coffee, it's fantastic. that's what Eddie says. He says, the one regret I have is not continue, exercising Eddie. that muscle. Yeah. yeah. And we'll continue so on. Seinfeld would literally go into Comedy Cellar, which is in New York. Mm -hmm. that's, I'm, I'm still in New York. I'm right, I've seen you there several times. Right on. Yeah. And so... He would go in and follow us. Like, we're, we're, I mean, our shit's sharp, and he comes in from Seinfeld and he goes up after us. And I gave him so much respect because he don't need, he loves com comedy, is that much mm -hmm. of a humbling art form. Mm -hmm. Art form, by the way, folks, mm -hmm. a yes. fucking art form. It's not some fuckers yeah. up there talking that shit. It's one of my Louder favorite for art forms. It's the haters in the back. It's, it's, and a lot of, and a lot, and, and, and you know, and he told me, he had seen me, I had just come from Egypt. And I literally booked myself from Egypt. I said, I'm coming to do my set when I get back from Egypt. I hit the airport. It was in the afternoon. And I did my set, mm -hmm. 2 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Did this whole thing about Egypt, the, uh, the camel ride. Seinfeld was there. He mm -hmm. saw me. Weeks later, he said, man, I've been wanting to talk to you, man. I saw, that, I saw that joke you did. That was fantastic. You broke down the whole camel set, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. He goes, how long have you been doing comedy? And I was like, in nine years. I said, yeah. I said, <laughs> Said about nine years now. He goes, Oh, you're a nine year old then. <laughs> he said, You're that's your age in comedy. Right. The years you put is the age in comedy. And that was the wisest shit he ever told me. He said, he said, I, he, he's he's talking to me for an hour. I, I'm not gonna not talk to Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. He gave me advice on comedy, certain jokes. He told mm -hmm. me how to do so. I was like, this is amazing. Mm. And that's how come I've known him for so long. And he said, Yeah, remember your age. That's your age in comedy, so you'll never get too big for the art form. Because right. this art form will shut you the fuck down yeah. every show. Oh, yeah. And I know some comics out here, they've been doing it as long as us, and they think they got it. Mm. Just because you're on a TV show has nothing to do with your stand-up. Mm -hmm. Because motherfuckers will put you on a TV show because you might be the right black person they right. want. All types of, all types of reasons. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you know, know what I mean? Yeah. I'm talking about your stand-up ain't got nothing to do with a sitcom, partner. Right. Word up, because that, that live, and you know as a live performer, mm -hmm. There's some motherfuckers that are studio uh, rappers. That's the metric. You know, what, what I do as an MC, yeah. the actual art of MCing is in the name MC. 
You are a master of ceremony. ceremony. So right. if you're not mastering the ceremony, <laughs> what the fuck you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like without the ceremony, you're not really doing the art form. Now you you could imitate the art form. You could make a oh, CD or no you doubt. could make a song. You could go in the studio and try to recreate that experience. Word. That becomes a rap song. Word. And a rap song becomes some, a commodity that someone can sell. Yeah. And a lot of people can make rap songs, but you're not an MC. There you go. Until you master that ceremony. It's like the like that song with KRS, the MC. The MC. Yeah, one that's one of my favorite, favorite <laughs> motherfucking songs. That's a it's good like, one. Dum, that's dum, the blueprint the DMC. right there. Boom, boom. KRS made an album called Woo! Blueprint, Woo! and then he gave you the blueprint on that song, mm! the MC. Before yeah. Jay-Z, there was the original blueprint, yeah. you know, and you, like, and, and let me tell you something about Talib. <laughs> this is how I used to run into him. <laughs> Motherfucker. I was at Apple Store. Oh. I love say I was at the Apple Store just trying to maybe I was that's when I was in the Apple products. <laughs> right. Okay. Trying to buy like back in the know, days. Yeah, I was looking for a laptop or whatever. Uh-huh. And all of a sudden, I didn't see any stage, no mm -hmm. nothing. They were like, ladies and gentlemen, Talib Kwali. <laughs> Spucker gets on a table and is right and murders. I go, yes. and I'm like, it's he a gets true off. story. I go. What the fuck are you doing in the middle of it? He's like, I don't give a fuck, B. This is what I do. I'll, yeah. try, I'll, I'll perform anywhere. Right. I mean, but but that's real MCing. Yeah. That's real shit. That live shit, it's mm -hmm. like singers. It, that's what separates the men from the boys is the mm -hmm. live performance. I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like with that, with comedy, it's like you got a lot of comics, and I'm not, I don't care what your dreams are, mm -hmm. but are you in comedy because that's the popular thing now? Mm -hmm. Are you doing it because you love it? Because it's the hardest way to make money. Right. Real talk. Right. Now, you know? see how excited you just got about hip hop? Yes. You are, there's a certain amount of comics that, you know, I run in a lot of comedy circles. Yes. And comedians love rappers. Yes. And rappers love comedians. comedians. We're sort of similar brains, bro. What do you think that is? What's that you connection? You know what it is? I'm going to tell you, I came up in, com in comedy when hip hop was so like, I was coming up to on stage and my, I can bring up my man Dion Cole because we started Shout damn out to near. Dion. We started up the same. Chicago, right? Chicago. Mm -hmm. All jokes aside, we started the same day, the same night, amateur night. Mm -hmm. We were in the bathroom, and I said, "He goes, yo, my name Dion Cole. What's uh -huh. your name?" I said, "I'm Godfrey." And I said, "Where you going up to?" I'm going up. He said, "I'm going up to J. Ru the Damager." Mm -hmm. I said, "I'm gonna go up to Red Man." Mm -hmm. and, and you know, and and in Chicago at that club, all jokes aside. Everybody was going up to like, you know, P-Funk and, Right, you know, it was still the adult contemporary set. The adult set. contemporary, the black right. people the wanted to hear. hard hit. bottoms. But me and Dion right. go up to, I go up right. to Red Man, mm -hmm. and he goes up to J. Rue to Damage. Everyone's like, what the fuck? Right. <laughs> but we, we, but hip hop coincided with what we did because we wanted to be the Method Mans and, and, and the Raekwons and the Talibs and all you mm -hmm. guys. We wanted to be like that as far as jokes wise, mm -hmm. because... The one thing I love about our, our our era is that you can quote shit mm -hmm. from Nas or you guys when you're talking about life. You can go, you right. know what? They said in Black Star, blah, right. blah, 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 and relate it to life. I want it the same way. I wanted my jokes to be the same way going, yo, like right. Richard Pryor. You hear what, you know You know that joke that Richard does that George Carlin, me and you're right. big George Carlin fans. Right. And he, For I context, want, we, we, yes. we hung out in Cincinnati a couple weeks ago yeah. and we sat and watched and I told him that you know, the, the go-to for comedians is always Richard Pryor. I don't care what kind of comedian you are, right. white, black, women, male, yeah, whatever, it's Richard. Richard Pryor. But then for the really intelligent ones, in my opinion, the comedians I fuck with is Carlin next. Carlin is like... And we watch a bunch of Carlin on YouTube. Yeah, and Carlin, and I know all Carlin. I mm -hmm. saw Carlin before he died. Thank mm -hmm. God I was able to see him live. Carlin, his word play, his wordsmith, mm -hmm. he's a wordsmith, and he's Carlin... Prior, these are like my Mount Rushmore. Paul Mooney, mm -hmm. fuck what you heard. Paul mm -hmm. Mooney, and and you know what? Whatever the fact that Bill Cosby shit has fucked up. Fuck what you heard. Still Cosby's one of the coldest storytellers. Absolutely. He influenced Louis C.K. He, he influenced Prior. Fuck that. Yeah. He Prior wanted Pryor, to be Cosby. Prior was a reaction to you, to Dan, Cosby. Dan, if you listen to their voices, it's like it's like Public Enemy, N.W.A. It's like no, no yeah. exactly. And you listen to if you listen to Pro, oh, Cosby. Cosby was you see my wife and the mm -hmm. people came in through. I used to work for Cosby, mm -hmm. you know, and that and you hear Pryor like you motherfuckers is crazy, Jack. Right. Same, Same kind shit. of intonation, mm -hmm. but Pryor was like I grew up in Peoria and I was right. raised by prostitutes. Right. So Cosby was Temple University, mm -hmm. so he took from Cosby. So these are the people I fuck with. That's why I tell other comics they'll ask me, 
One thing I never do is I never get, I don't give comedians advice on my own, like, oh, let me tell you what you <laughs> Right. I don't do none of that shit. Right. You you find your way your own way. Com you know what I mean? Right. But if someone asked me. I saw this happen. Because mm. a friend of mine um, in Cincinnati, yeah. Kevin, he was opening for right, you. Right, right. And I seen him give you advice. And it was interesting because, you know, you were, you were, you were, your serious show had just finished, right? Yes. And you had a trucker in the room. My for boy, people, Big Daddy. Right. For people who don't oh know, when, when, when Godfrey's serious show was on, a large portion of his audience was truckers. Big black bu truckers. Black truckers especially, right? yes. And there's a network of black truckers, and they was coming in, and, and this guy, this young man was giving him, he, he asked him for some advice, and the advice you gave him was priceless. You gave yes. him advice on his set or what he could do better. Yeah, cool and dude. He, and he only had two years in. So he only was like, you're a two-year-old? You're a two-year-old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I could tell that he was a two-year-old because the way his style was, mm. I've seen that. Right. Yeah. I've seen, because especially with, I could say, black comedy, a lot of black comedy, white comedy, they all approach it the same way. Yo, what's up, motherfucker? Yo, right. I know yo. It's the, it. They they're copying. Well, because you watch if you watching black comedy, you watching yes. old comic views. Old you watch a Chitlin circuit thing, and you thinking loud, and you thinking loud. Yeah. and a lot of times loud is insecurity. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I kind of love, like now with especially African American comedians. You see the Gerard Carmichael's, the Hannibal Burris's yeah. who aren't loud. Yeah. Because there's a lot of funny black people it's, that aren't it, loud. It's introspective. It's introspective. It's yeah. not always loud like, yo, you better fuck the right. shit. You ever suck right. a dick? <laughs> Good night. <laughs> 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 Give it up the chicken wing. Right, right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> and then the next guy get up. Man, I was fucking so hard. Yeah. My dick run off. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but then you get on stage. <laughs> <laughs> because they're imitating, which which you got to start off with something. Yeah, you start off imitating. Like, I started imitating KRS and Rakim. Of course, yeah. it's natural. And then you find your own way. Another example is a man by the name of Tony Woods. Yes, classic. Who is one of the coldest man? He's a and teacher. I, I will continue to bring his name up. He is under. He's under. Deserve. I mean, he just. He, they don't. People don't show him the respect he deserves. He's like a legend to me because I've never seen his uh, a set by him. Right. But my comedian friends always bring Man, his name. Man, Tony Woods literally mm -hmm. taught me how to perform internationally. Mm -hmm. Took me, Tony Rock, and us over to du to, to Amsterdam mm -hmm. and Europe and to watch Tony Woods wow. master European audiences mm -hmm. and destroy that motherfucker mm -hmm. just with just a craftsman. And how he did, because I remember I would watch Tony Woods when he was doing like the ghetto rooms. Because when I first, I'm from Chicago, so I came mm. under the, the tulage of Bernie Mac. Right. Real and you talk. was on the Bernie Mac show. I was on Bernie Mac show. Which I showed you that, that night. Shit. Was, oh, he's he's playing a character on Bernie Mac show back in the day. Shout out to Bernie Mac. Because Bernie was, Mac, would, I remember meeting when I went in Chicago. I started off doing mainstream. Mm. I always did mainstream and black audience. Mm. And I was doing the mainstream. I started off as, in a comedy team, actually, with a buddy named Alex. We mm -hmm. started a comedy team. I broke off with him. Mm -hmm. And you know who told me to break off with him was Steve Harvey, of all people, mm -hmm. when he was actually kind of nice. Steve <laughs> Harvey. Because Steve is a mean guy. Right. But Steve was like... Push a T. Yeah, Steve. What's a push a T? <laughs> yeah. I've never met him in person. So I broke off and started doing my solo shit. And then I said, man, I want to do some black audiences, man. Mm -hmm. I want to do black. And they were like, yo, you need to go see Bernie Mac. I said, who the fuck is Bernie Mac? He said, on the south side of Chicago. I was, I was the north side of Chicago. Go to the Bernie Mac at the Cotton Club. I said, okay. So mm -hmm. I showed up. I showed up uh, Monday, the next Monday, 8 o'clock. I see this motherfucker sweating with a towel, glasses oh. going, I'm sick and tired of being motherfucking sick and tired. <laughs> Let me tell you, motherfucker. You know, I'm tired of this shit. You motherfuckers don't understand. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And I said, God, and he's destroyed. When I, mm. See, that's why when cats be like, you know, not to knock down L.A. and shit, mm. but when, I, when you guys are talking about funny, man, who are you talking about? Mm. I said, when I saw Bernie, motherfucker, we saw Bernie. Mm. And this is Bernie when he ain't famous, when he's right. starving. It's raw Bernie. Raw Bernie, yeah. 15 years in. He started mm -hmm. with Arsenio on them in 79. Right. When, by the time he got on TV, he was like, I ain't scared of you. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. Yeah. He changed Def Jam. Right. Adele Gibbons changed Def Jam. Right. Those are the people we opened up for. That's right. Bernie was like, took me under his fucking toolage and taught me and literally took me under and would give me advice. I was so lucky. I was mm. sitting there with his wife. Three in the morning at the Cotton Club by myself. Mm. He go like, what you gonna do? Who gonna take the torch? You <laughs> motherfuckers trying to get standing ovations and shit, you know? But you don't understand, you got to take people for a ride. Uh, you understand? Yeah. You got to motherfucking, you got to be interesting. You got mm. to have a motherfucking story. Mm. Oh yeah, 
I was I was schooled by that. Wow. You know what I mean? Now bringing it back to connecting it back to hip hop. Yes. I have a theory that because I've heard you know right now you're working on material and you yes, are you traveling and I, I've heard you on Vlad and on stage talk lovingly about hip hop and knowing the difference between real hip hop and mumble rap and that's a subject of yours that you like to talk about. I do. My theory is the sort of online Instagram comedians are like the mumble rap of comedy. Yes, they are. Is that That's accurate? Perfect. <laughs> because and not and not, and a shout out, I'm a shout out to King Batch. Mm -hmm. Shout out to all the cats that I this kid named Rennie that I started doing sketches with. They helped my numbers go up. Okay. And on, they, on IG. No doubt. Right. And 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 they want to learn stand up. Mm -hmm. King Batch does. Uh, Rennie does, mm -hmm. I, and this kid named Rennie who looks like me, I play mm -hmm. his like stepdad, you know. Okay. I he wanted he says man I want to do comedy. They're all on wild and now he goes I really want to do comedy. I said okay man, but doing a sketch ain't the same. You're in a day. different time continuum mm -hmm. because you do a sketch you you edit it and you let it and you let it sit in the ether. Mm -hmm. Stand up is like you're present, bro. Right. Like they're sitting there going all right I paid my money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You the headliner man. Mm -hmm. All right. I need 30 minutes to last, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. And they sitting there like this. Right. And they I will pay. heckle your ass. Yeah, they, and, and I'm drinking. Fuck mm -hmm. that. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. And it's like this. Ha, ha, ha. Next. Right. I need more. Right. You, they don't understand. So I brought him to amateur night. And bless his soul. Bless his heart. He went up. And, and he said, I said, what you going to do? I said, you got five minutes. He said, man, I'm going to talk about my uncle. I'm like, I'm gonna do it. I said, cool. He went up. Drew a blank. I laughed uh, the whole time. Uh, and then I kept going, it was a real Yo, what time. about your uncle, man? Talk about your uncle. <laughs> oh, my God. He, but, but, he, but I love that uh -huh. he went up and, and, and got beaten in the face. Yeah. And it's like, these cats don't understand this is a real craft. I think maybe it's because comedy is not looked at as an art form. That's why mm. comedy doesn't get respect in, in, in the Oscars, mm -hmm. which is harder than drama. Mm -hmm. Even Denzel and fucking on, you remember, remember the actor's studio? Mm -hmm. Denzel yeah. Washington and uh, Robert De Niro said, what is your biggest challenge? They comedy. Said, and Denzel said, comedy, man. Yeah, you, I've never seen Denzel. Denzel. What, what, did, what? And he's a funny dude. Yeah. He's a funny man. And and and, and Robert think, De Niro's a funny man. I've seen De Niro do comedy. But they but he hams it up sometimes. But he goes, he goes, yeah. he goes, comedy's the hardest. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I have problems with comedy. It's definitely I eh, you know. Yeah, but yeah. it's it is the hardest. But I think mm -hmm. maybe I don't know why people and a lot of times people approach comedy, which is fine to go, I can do that, but they approach it with a disrespect. Mm -hmm. They go, yo, I can do that shit. I'm funnier than him. I'm not talking about the barbecue humor, partner. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about talking about people's mamas. That's not what comedy is. Mm -hmm. What if what if you had a comedy show where you can't reach the audience? Mm -hmm. You can't talk about nobody's mamas. Mm -hmm. You can't talk about nobody's shoes. And they just want you to do your jokes. What mm -hmm. are you going to do then? Mm -hmm. But that's what a lot of African Americans mm -hmm. approach comedy like. Mm -hmm. They think it's just... You know, well, nigga, look at this motherfucker. Right. That's one aspect. Now, let me ask you that. Yeah. So there's, that's one aspect. Crowd work is one aspect. Yeah. Impressions is one aspect. You're and very of good at. Of course, course right? Impressions, yeah. Um, uh, Self-deprecation. Like, there's certain, of course. there's certain comedy tropes, right? Are there comedy tropes, I guess it's for both of y'all, yeah. that are, like, looked down upon? Or, and or, are, are there things that is, like, you know, like... Well, like, do people sometimes look down on impressions and crowd work and some it of those really things? It really depends on how you do it. There's a guy by the name of Jay Okerson. Mm-hmm. When I tell you a fucking master at crowd work, mm -hmm. there's Alan Havey, D.L. Hughley, that motherfucker's yeah. so cold, yeah. but he has jokes, yeah. and he's politically smart, yeah. but when he goes I into remember the, them early. you know, when he takes yeah. a break, he goes, hey, brother, what's it, how you, what you doing? Yeah. Man, what's, you what don't the want to fuck sit in you the wearing? He's, at a D.L. show. He's fantastic yeah. at the crowd. It depends on who you are. Mm -hmm. Some people are good. There's, like, I can do impersonations, but what's I remember- What's your favorite to do? My favorite, shit. I loved I love doing I love Jason Statham. I did Jason Statham Jason for Statham. Jason Statham. Let me see that. Oh yeah, I did it for him on the um when when Opie and Jim when it's Opie uh -huh. and Anthony it was uh -huh. Jim and Opie and Jim. Um, Jason Statham was a regular on uh -huh. that show, and so they said they brought Jason Statham. And I was sitting there on the show like these motherfuckers want me to do it in front of him. I'm like, God damn. So I said. I'm really happy to be here. I can't believe it. I'm the transporter. That's, and I and he literally was like. You do me better than fucking me. <laughs> like it was fucking fantastic. And so I love doing him. I like doing Denzel. I like my Trump. Trump is probably 
one of my favorites because no one expects. And I could do Trump better than the fucker on show on Showtime, right? Because I do Obama and Cory Booker on that cartoon. Yeah, yeah. I, I love to hear Cory Booker. Oh, he's like, this is America. I'm really <laughs> tired. I was mayor of Newark. <laughs> I do him on that oh Showtime God. cartoon. I love watching him go into the impressions because yeah. he's like entering that person's Yeah, and the body. Obama is just like, uh, just like I said, we just got to find a way. I can do, I just, it's, right. and Dean Edwards, another buddy of mine, mm -hmm. Dean, Dean Edwards is a fantastic impressionist. Jay Farrell is like a savant. Yeah, he's, and he's crazy his with Kevin it. Kevin Hart and his Will <laughs> right. Smith. Right, crazy. He's, but here's the thing. I never let impressions be my main focus because mm -hmm. a lot of times, if you, most impressionists are corny, their mm -hmm. materials it it, sla it lacks mm. because it's like a, it's like a, it it's much. like a guitar mm -hmm. music. You ever see guitar comedians? Mm -hmm. They play instruments and shit. They yeah. can't wait to get to the instrument because their right. material's garbage. Mm. You know what I mean? And a lot of times you got to be careful. So my my first so manager, that's the one I was looking for. That's I think the that one. It's different. Oh, the guitar. The guitar. Just, <laughs> the guitar. I mean, it's not really stand up because right. you're hiding forms. behind. What do you say? It's different forms of comedy, and I think that if you look at it at that, then it's like you don't really, you won't really compare anybody because it's like with the Instagram comments and stuff like that, with the sketches, that's a whole different art form mm -hmm. than stand. -up. Yeah, but they yeah. want to consider themselves. They think it's the same thing. They're like, oh, I could do stand up, and when they get on that stage and they go, oh fuck, this shit ain't working, mm. and I, that's because it's a different animal. It's a different animal. It's just I can't explain it. You got to do it in order to know. You know what I mean? Yeah, I understand, but it's like that's the that's where the disconnect comes because if they just said, "Oh, I do comedy and not I do stand up comedy," then no one would really have an issue with it. And then like they get booked on these shows. And oh, they booked themselves. Go to the shows yeah. and they're right. thinking, "Oh, this is stand up. Like this is whack." And then you know what I'm saying? And it messes up for other. It live messes, comedians. and it's sad because a lot of these clubs will take them on because they're going to get that. They get the numbers. Off. Yeah. And I get that mm -hmm. as a business, but it's going to fade mm -hmm. because. The Instagram, Insta, is so quick. The popularity is so quick. But man, this is what's so beautiful about comedy. The, co the art, it takes a long time to get to it perfect. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all that fame shit, because the year goes by fast. They're going to book you again. Hey, man, <laughs> you got to come back. And your whack shit's going to come. And they're going to mm. be like, yo, what the fuck? Mm. And then what's scary is they call themselves headliners. But then you got some... Veteran comics that are going to do 20, 30 minutes before you mm -hmm. and rock. Mm -hmm. And they will give you a hot 25 and go follow that motherfucker. Right. And there's some angry right. comics out there that are waiting to be on a show with an right. Instagram. They go, I'm going to ruin his career. Right. I'm going to give them a hot. My boy does that. He said, I'm going to give him a hot 30. Right. I'm going to give him a hot 30. That's ridiculous. I'm going to let that mic smoke and let these right. fuckers try to do it. And that's right. why a lot of Instagram I comics. I kick a hole in the speaker, pull the plug, <laughs> and I jet. I'll be like, your right. turn, right. headliner. But I still think that, I mean, I don't know. I, I I feel like if they're if they're trying to do the art form, it's like it's it, these people they need money. They're getting money on the road, you know what I mean? So they go on the road because they're like, okay, I want to try stand up, and I still feel like as a feature performer, you know, you shouldn't go out of your way to try and embarrass them because that's gonna mess up the overall. Mm, the show. No, it's not gonna mess anything up because it it it, it no. I mean, I'll it say it like this: it, it teaches you a lesson to listen. Don't book yourself as a headliner. KRS did that to me. Oh, I was really? on tour with Karis one. Oh shit! And he would be like, he would, he would be like, I had a hot record out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I don't know if it was Get By or Hot Day, whatever. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, and he was booked to open for me, and I remember our protest, right? And he'd be like, No, 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 I want Quali to go on. And then he would perform, and he would be like, Your turn. <laughs> and I love that. Yeah, man. You know, I, you know, know who better did that to me? When I worked for Cosby. Uh, Method Man and Red Man did that to me too. That's so fantastic. Yeah. Like, that's what great. you got, nigga, what you got. Good. Yeah. That's like Jordan, mm -hmm. Barkley, yes. Mm -hmm. But it's good for you. Mm -hmm. Cosby did that shit to me. Mm -hmm. I warmed up for Cosby, the, his last show on CBS with Dougie Doug. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, was the, I was the audience coordinator for six months. So I had to do eight hours of warm up, eight mm -hmm. hours. With only an hour break, mm. and I didn't get to I didn't get to pass out T-shirts and shit like they do. Right. Candy. They were like, you can't do nothing. <laughs> so man, I came like, up. Waka waka, nigga. Let's go. Waka waka. No cursing, <laughs> no nothing. I had 300 people, man. Mm. I came up with shit out my ass. I couldn't believe. You know how you just? I just want to get paid. I don't want to get right. fired. Yeah. Right. And one day I was I would kill. I'd be killing, 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 man. And one day I came in, and. All of a sudden, they were like, uh, Dr. Cosby wants to do a set before you, you mm. start. I said, what? Cosby had never come out. 
Mm -hmm. But he was hearing me rock because the ah, whole place is mine. So you spurred that. Oh man, I had buddies in CBS. Mm -hmm. My boy was working for CBS. He goes, man, you, man, what the fuck are you doing over there? I go, dude, I'm trying to get fired, bro. Trying to eat, bro. I'm trying to eat. Right. So then Cosby comes out, gets the mic, starts telling jokes in front of people. I'm mm -hmm. like, this is the greatest shit ever. Mm -hmm. He's coming, and I'm, and Cosby's destroying the bitch, like right. killing. Just mm -hmm. you see, and then and drop, and drop, and drop, and drop, and drop, and drop, bam. <laughs> And then he tosses the mic and goes, follow that shit. Mm -hmm. He told me, and I said, that's yep. what the fuck I yep. want. Yep. He, I made him come out. Right. And he goes, made follow that, out. son. And I said, thank you. Because right. all I'm going to do is get better. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Let me so ask it's, a, it's a compliment yeah. to you because they know you're fucking good. Yeah. And it's a compliment. And you know Meth and Red are fucking Meth, wonderful nah, Meth dudes. brings that up to this day when I see him. Dude, like, he's a... Yeah. And, and you know what I, I, I got from Meth? I was in, I, two years ago, I was in... Uh, Denver for 420. Mm -hmm. I happen to be there, Denver Improv, and my friend who runs a the theater say, "Man, Method and Red are live." I think I was at there this too. Theater. Were you there? Yeah, I might he have go, seen I you go. There. I know Meth and Red. They mm -hmm. see me at the uh, Monday nights, mm -hmm. uh, the, the the ghetto nights on Mondays mm -hmm. in, in in LA. And I said, I know them for years. Right. And I went over there. You said, all oh, rappers and comics know each other. <laughs> <We're not. laughs> Especially if they black. Right. Yeah. And I go over there. And and I go, yo, and Matt's like, yo, what's up, kid? Boom, right. boom, boom. And we chilling. And I and I said, man, what you up to? He said, man, I'm trying to be like you with that intelligence shit. That shit you be doing on the mic. You know how to compliment when I met Rakim? Mm -hmm. Rakim said the same. Rakim awesome. said, he said, man, I like what you do, man. Yeah, man. That intelligence shit. They ain't and lying. fucking with you guys. And and it's it's nice to know when the, when cats that I look up to mm -hmm. and and listen to mm -hmm. man when I'm going on off stage right. I'm bumping your music right you bump my, my you bump what I, you bump I, definition I, before before astron you came out. Was astron astronomy was astronomy I bump astronomy on stage yeah. cuz that's what I do because it's it's what gets me into what I do right lyrical content intelligence you know mm -hmm. what I mean that kind of shit I got a question for both of y'all yeah. um do comedians cuz I hang out with comedians often mm. and then I'll be trying to tell my friends about what happened so do comedians get annoyed when someone tries to retell their joke? Well, no. Well, like, I you mean, know, you'd be like, yo, I was with the comedian, this nigga said, this is what he said. Oh. <laughs> and then you try to say it. No, you know, I, I like when it doesn't work. You go, well, you have to be there. You have to be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you should let him, I'm right. fucking it up. Right. But whatever, and whenever you tell a joke, uh -huh. always say, I'm fucking it up. I'm fucking it so up. So you can save your own ass. I'm, I'm going to do it shitty. I'm fucking but it I'm, up. I'm going to just let you know so right. you can save your own ass. All right, so I'm yeah. fucking this one up because I'm going to okay, tell you no. a joke. <laughs> That, that D.L. Hewley said, right? Okay. And he was talking about Spike Lee being mad at uh, Django, right? Mm -hmm. And he said Spike Lee said that his ancestors would be embarrassed if he knew if they knew that he watched Django. And he said, shit, nigga, my, my ancestors is, is embarrassed because I was in Soul Plane. <laughs> that's right. I was too. Right. I was too. That's, that's why I bring it up. Because I'm waiting for Soul Plane too. Fuck that. <laughs> Soul Kevin, Plane Kevin needs to do Soul Plane too. Stop trying to avoid it. Do let's Soul Plane too. But Soul Plane, as important it is for the culture, yeah. it, it, it introduced a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It connected a lot of oh people. Oh my God. It's seen that as, as a very terrible movie. No, it's not. Well, it, I, I'm saying I'm saying it got bad, it got panned okay. the review wise. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm not, I wasn't in no terrible shit. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm saying this. Soul Plane was just a fucking comedy. Mm -hmm. Right. It was a spoof. Like, remember Airplane? It's a spoof of Airplane. It's a spoof. Right. And first of all, when I was on the set, it was a very high-budgeted movie. Mm -hmm. That set was beautiful. Mm. Terry Crews is in it. Yeah. Method. Yeah. John Witherspoon. DL. Monique. Yeah. Lonnie Everybody's Love. In Everybody's in it. And, and Tom uh, Arnold. Tom right. Arnold's in it. Great ensemble. It was, and when I watched it That's on the my, second time Tom Arnold's name has come up. On this show. Wow. Because Dak Shepard is friends with him. We should okay. play Tom oh, Arnold, to too. And then. Tom Arnold got them Trump nigger tapes. So oh we need to God. holler at him. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Trump nigger tapes? Yeah, Can't he said wait. he got the tapes. <laughs> of Trump saying Trump nigger tapes. Nigger. Yeah. Trump and nigger go. <laughs> we know that Trump said nigger. Though, right. We, so heard, we, just, we just heard the it. Reagan monkey tapes. Oh, did you we, hear that? Yeah, do we need to wait 30 years here to try to But he was talking to Nixon. So Nixon, you know, if you ever see that documentary with Nixon, mm -hmm. all the uh, all the tell, you know, he he taped all his uh, conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so he was calling him talking about the Jews. And Jews. Oh, yeah, he goes, oh, yeah, it's crazy. Hey, I fuck them, got them, Joe, yeah, fuck yeah. them. And then the next day they're like, I believe the Jewish community yep. is one of the greatest. <laughs> yeah. So the, um, the soul plane was like, when I watched it on my own, I said, this shit is hilarious. Mm -hmm. It was just a comedy, dude. Mm -hmm. Me and Snoop Dogg are the pilots. This shit was fun. I had eight, nine fun. days of me and Snoop <laughs> laughing. At, we were laughing every day. It was fantastic. That's awesome. And you know what I mean? And, and at the time when we auditioned, let me tell you something. 
black actors were not working at the mm -hmm. time. Right. Nope, there was no there were no auditions. And my my um my agent goes, yo, and my agents were we, they kept it real. They were like, yo, there's this fucking film. Right. It's ghetto as fuck. <laughs> right. Um, I don't know if you want to go for it. Um, it's called Soul Plane. And what's funny is I was at the that writer's. That sounds like a joke pitch. I know. I, know. <laughs> I was at the writer's. I was at the writer's house mm -hmm. at a party. The mm -hmm. guy who wrote it. I said, oh. oh, I was at this guy's. I didn't know he wrote that. He goes, yeah, it's ghetto. They want you to audition for the for the pilot. Mm -hmm. And I go, who's who's cast? Snoop. I said, I'm going in. I'm in. Fuck that. Yeah. Right. I said, Snoop Dogg is an international superstar. Yeah. This is when I knew Snoop was big. When I was in China. When I was in China, old Chinese people knew who Snoop was. Old Chinese people don't give a fuck about anybody. That's right. They don't give a fuck about anybody. That's right. Oh, you do you ever talk to old Chinese people? You just leave <laughs> them alone. They would be like, Snoop a dog. Snoop a dog. Oh, shit. So I do went you in. A Snoop impression? This a uh, Snoop. Oh, hell no. Nah. Yeah. This is bullshit, homie. You speak yeah. Chinese, right? I'm, I, I'm learning it. Okay. Ni hao, ni hao ma. Wa shu me go on. And I just said, ni hao, ni I'm, I'm American. Wa shu fei shao in. I am African, yeah. So okay. yeah. you sound like you said something Fish totally out. different. Yeah, but I can I can pretend Chinese. He's wrong. Tom Chao is Shu. Come to you. Tom Chao is Shu. Then Shu. Tom Chai Shu. Tom Li Shu. I can and, and Chinese people go. You sound just like right, he did an Chinese. impersonation of a Chinese Which person. Yes, no with us speaking Chinese. It's, it's a tone. It's a tonal language. In in Mandarin, it's five tones. In in Cantonese, it's eight tones. Mm -hmm. I got to, I got a couple black friends that speak perfect Mandarin. My a couple of my black speaks, friends, uh, and it's fucked up because. To fuck with Chinese people, and you, they don't know, cause, cause my buddy will be like, we'll be around Chinese people. I, I bring him around Chinese people on purpose. So I go, yo, what are they saying? What are they saying? And he goes, man, I'm gonna start talking to him. They freak the fuck out. Their <laughs> eyes literally open. They get round. Yeah, yeah, I'm not serious. They, my boy be like, ni hao, did you want them there? They'll be like, what the, I, I, how you know Chinese? <laughs> and we're like, well, how you know English? <laughs> right. How you know? Ying Wang, Ying Wang, Ying Wang is English in, in, in Mandarin. Ying Wang. He's like, Ying Wang. It's like, how you know? Okay, yeah. see? You never know, black guy. You never know. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> but yeah, man. It sounds um, like I'm watching The Last Dragon. Out my, there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my cousin speaks fluent Japanese, right? He had a Japanese girlfriend. Yeah. And I was like knocked out. I was drunk or whatever. And yeah. I didn't know he spoke Japanese. And I'm like, who the fuck is in my house? Because I'm hearing a Japanese yeah, man yeah. having a conversation. Yeah. And yeah. then I'm like, oh, shoot, it's you. That's very New York, too. Like, black people, you don't know who you're talking to. You could be, we can mm -hmm. be Panamanian, mm -hmm. we could mm -hmm. be French, we could, you know what I mean? That's, that brings me to my next thing. Yes, sir. Um, you Did we finish our thought before? No, what were we talking about? We were talking about Snoop, Snoop Dogg. Snoop. Oh, Soul, Soul, Soul Plane. Soul Plane, Snoop Dogg. It was fantastic. It was great. It was a good time. I Soul think Plane they should, do, because it's a cult classic. It's literally a cult classic. Mm -hmm. Don't. Oh, Black actors we weren't, weren't working. working, so I went into the fucking, I'm sorry, I went into the to the room, and everybody was doing the ghetto shit. Everybody was doing the ghetto shit. It was the same old shit. And I went into the room, and my boy, uh, what's his name, Ulysses, Ulysses Torero, his brother was the director. Yuli. Je Yuli. Yuli Torero. Yuli Torero. Oh, my God. Yo, and Jesse. That's my drinking partner, son. <laughs> Yuli and Jesse. Jesse Yo, was man. the one. He, Jesse's a big video director. Yeah, he's big. Huge. Yeah. So yeah, this Jesse and Yuli, man, yo, that's, yo, that's my crew. That's my Yuli, old school crew. And Yuli is the that's big a wild boy. Wow, <laughs> Yuli's my dude. So Yuli's like this, yo, son, New York in the building. Yeah. What's, he's so unprofessional. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go into the room. Yeah. No, Yuli's like, yo, yo, son, man, you I knock him out, in a man. Yo, I said, boom. I said, so I go in, and they said, so what are you gonna do with the character? I said. Everybody's doing ghetto shit. I'm mm -hmm. gonna be African. You brought I'm Nigerian, that. You brought that so to the table. I brought that. To, mm -hmm. I said I'm gonna change it up. I'm gonna mm -hmm. be. I'm Nigerian, so I'm just gonna right. be Nigerian. And right. they were like, "All right, man." They were like, "I had the motherfuckers rolling so hard." They was like, "You know, you got the part, right? Right. <laughs> just don't walk out. Don't say nothing. Right." Aww. And then Yuli was like, "And but Yuli, unprofessional, was like, that's what I'm talking about, son. He's the fucking <laughs> casting director. <laughs> He's like this year. So that's how I got the part. Wow. And then all the whole of script course is, it was Yuli. Everything is everything is improv. Mm -hmm. I, they changed the script. Everything I did was all improv. Wow. I improv everything. Mm. So everything was improv. The mm. fucking song, I, 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 all that shit. I improv everything. Beautiful. So and Snoop showed me so much. Mm -hmm. Let me another thing. Why rappers mean so much to me. Snoop is one of the coldest motherfuckers on the mic. He, I remember he had his big ass bodyguards, those crip dudes, mm -hmm. big motherfuckers. And I remember one morning he comes up to me and his hair is half braided, half, and he goes, you know, stupid. He goes, he goes, yo, Goffy, let me talk to you, homie. I was like, what's up, man? He goes, I just want to let you know, dude. We were just talking about you, man. He goes, yo, 
man, you one of the coldest comedic motherfuckers I ever worked with. Mm. And he said it on, remember Best Damn Sports Show? Mm -hmm. He said it on that show, mm -hmm. and my friends call me and say, yo, Snoop's giving you props. So that's why when a, if a rapper says, man, I like what you're doing, because mm -hmm. you guys deal with words, mm -hmm. you deal with thoughts, and you're able to, through syncopated beats, mm -hmm. through to get your point across, that's what comedians do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a beat. So it feels it's a rhythm. It's a rhythm. Yeah. And it feels good when it comes from you guys. So, yeah. Speaking so about Snoop, uh, I actually met Snoop. I smoked with him. And <laughs> nice. Yeah, Isn't he great? talked crap about the comedian that was on stage who I actually know, so I won't say his name. Fuck! But, uh, <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> I'm not going to put him out. Okay, He's one okay. of my friends. Put him and out I felt there. so bad that he was like talking about him and I laughed. Who's not going to laugh at Snoop? Why yeah, is he passing course. you to Jay? Whatever. Was, right. So uh, what was your favorite Snoop story from shooting with him? Man, when we were talking about old cartoons that we grew up with, uh, to talk about Scooby-Doo with fucking Snoop, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> and we, me and him were going, scooby dooby doo <laughs> where are you? We need <laughs> some help. And we're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and then Snoop goes, and Snoop goes, man, he goes like this, man. Every time it's the same dude, they always find. You remember, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. all you meddling kids. Right. He would, he would have got away with it too. If it wasn't for you meddling, meddling kids, kids. <laughs> and yeah. we talk about that. And when I, when, when Snoop Dogg, when his kids were small, you know, his sons, right. when they were little, I remember when they were little, and Snoop was talking about how he disciplines his son. Mm -hmm. I was laughing. So he goes, Yo, so my kid, you know, I got one of my kids playing football, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then my other son, he wants to play football. But I said, Yo, you can't be crying and shit if you get tackled. You can't be crying. You go get your motherfucking ass off the goddamn field if you cry. Right. And his kid's like, no, I'm not going to cry. His kid catches the ball. Yeah. His tackle starts crying. Oh, <laughs> he goes, no. get your punk ass off the goddamn field. <laughs> he goes, no. And then he's like this. That's how you got to discipline, mom. <laughs> he was just so I mad. was blessed to just be around oh, that. Oh, man. Yeah, he showed me mad love. It was great. Oh, man. It was great. Um, speaking of um, mad love. And <laughs> yes, sir. Growing up and being mm. a kid, yes, you grew up identifying as African and African American. Nigerian that, American, yes, sir. That, so you, you identify as Nigerian American because your parents make sure you. They say, mm. "Don't forget where you come from. Mm -hmm. You are Nigerian. You live here, but always remember right. where you are." You know, right? Because all my relatives, everybody had accents except mm. for me and my brother and my sister. My sister was born there. Mm -hmm. She understand. I'm I'm Igbo, by mm -hmm. the way. There's different tribes: mm -hmm. Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa. I'm Igbo. You know, and I represent, mm -hmm. represent Evo Tribe. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, you, your African parents always let you know, you don't forget, we just happen to live right. in America because, you know. Now, they was, left Nigeria because of the Civil War. Civil War, the Biafra Wars, yes. Yeah, I wrote a song about Get that. The fuck. Yeah, that. it's called Ballad of the Black Gold. Mm. And I did a video because you know Fantastic. I spent time in Lagos. Yes, you did. And I, I, I've, you know, that video was. Fantastic. Yeah, so that's you you're talking about the hostile gospel. The video. hostile gospel. That yeah, was fantastic. That's, and I, I, I didn't for the Ballad of Black Gold. I didn't go to Nigeria, but it's about okay Shell gas company and, gas, and oil and, and oil and, oil. and you know, Fela Kuti and his Fela. mother and things that were happening right. and and the corruption in Nigeria. Right. Um, you made comments to DJ Vlad. Well, before I speak about these comments, mm -hmm. right? Do you know what? ADOS is or ADOS. AD. I heard. Why did that? Something. It's a thing on the internet now. Something brought that. I saw that somewhere. Yeah, it's a thing on the internet. I had to Google it from. What is that? Your so ADOS is. <laughs> is it? Is it acronym? For it's an acronym for American Descendants of Slaves. Ah, right. That's what it was. The reparation shit because they gave reparations. The gay community. They reparations. Mm -hmm. Well, well they're trying. They're trying to necessarily give the reparations. Somebody's yeah. making That's a case. Different. They're making it's a, a case. Yeah. It's almost like they're. It's like any time black people have a plight, mm -hmm. people get so angry at us. Like, mm -hmm. we did something to them. Mm -hmm. We've done nothing to anybody. Well, let me break it down. You understand? There's nothing wrong with reparations. As a matter of fact, I'm pro-reparations. Yeah, and of I course. think as all people should be. Of course. The problem with ADOS is that the founder of it is a board member of a white nationalist, anti-immigrant, particularly anti-black immigrant organization called Progressives for Immigration Reform. What? Right? And so this is an organization uh, funded by a white nationalist named John Tanton, who just passed away, by the way, but one of his things is, it's very insidious, is he starts these organizations. He, he became, he was a member of Sierra Club. Okay. And they kicked him out when they found out he was a white nationalist. Right. He tries to use the environmental issue to say, Environmental issues could be solved if we have less immigrants, particularly, they don't come out and say it, but they mean less Mexicans well, and less then Caribbeans. Well, whites should all leave. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, well, you know, the Native Americans. The Native Americans. Right. Like, so the problem with this ADOS <laughs> thing is that 
they're using the reparations thing, which on the surface is sounds fantastic. Right. But what they're saying is, is that we are American descendants of slaves. These Africans, these and it's particularly Nigerians yes. and these Haitians and mm. these Jamaicans right. and these Mexicans yeah. are coming to try to get our reparations. So they be on some build the wall shit. They be on some fuck Nigerian shit. Yeah. They be on some fuck Haitian shit. Yeah. But they wrap it in, we want reparations. Right. So a lot of conservative black people are joining them because it's conservative black people who want to show that they're pro-black. I'm pro-reparations, but I'm also, I'm an American. I'm building the wall. Right. I'm anti-immigrant. Yeah. It's, it's so, a lot it's, of hypocrisy. There's a lot of hypocrisy there. And so the, the bill is being pushed in Congress, H.R. 40. There's organizations like NCOBRA, which are started by members of the CBC, where they've been pushing this reparations bill for a minute. Mm. It's been slow going because we're in a system that's white supremacist. Right. But these ADOS people... Um, it's a lot, a lot of Russian bots now getting involved. It's white people in blackface. I know this because, you know, I'm on Twitter all the time. The white uh, people in blackface come at me all the time. Yeah. They're now claiming ADOS, right? And I bring you up because you talked about on Vlad famously some of the stereotypical ways in which Nigerians and other Africans talk down mm -hmm. on African Americans. Yeah. Talking about calling us Akatas and stuff Akata, like that. Yeah. Right, Akata. Mm -hmm. Now, my story is similar to yours. When I was growing up, they called... The, the the Africans African booty scratches black yeah. African booty scratches right and we was just in Haitian people and all that before the Fugees <laughs> yeah before the <laughs> Fugees in Brooklyn you couldn't be Haitian you couldn't no hell you would no. get abused and bullied and all man I remember you you'd have to hide your African ness mm. because the African Americans in Chicago remember I'm in Chicago most segregated city in the nation by mm -hmm. the way but the area I lived in uptown was all immigrants so all mm -hmm. my friends were like Russian mm -hmm. Polish um, African Korean all all immigrants and. But the African Americans, who are mainly your makeup of, of people you hang with mm -hmm. from Mississippi, all mm -hmm. the southern, they'd be like, man, African motherfuckers. Right. You'd be chasing lions. Right. They would, and then we'd right. be embarrassed, like, Ooh, right. You, right. you wanted to fit in. Right. Now, Nigerians got they sellouts. Yeah. African Americans got they sellouts. I don't know who the Nigerian Candace Owens is or the yeah. Nigerian, you know, right. Diamond of Silk is, but yeah. I know they exist. Yes. I've been to Legos enough. You damn right. You know, Look, I mean, shit, government officials sell out their own people. That's right. Fuck. That's why Nigeria is 40% under the poverty line. Right. I would yeah. go to now in, in Legos when I was there, it was rolling blackouts. Yeah. Kids still got polio. Yeah. So, yeah. I also saw, also saw yeah, you know, still got polio. So I also saw a lot of beautiful things. Yeah, of course. You know, you also see like abject poverty, but abject. people got Bentleys in the street. Yeah. At, at, you know, it's like, yeah. it's crazy. It's my, crazy. My, when, I, when I went to visit my grandparents, in Nigeria, um, we stayed with my uncle, who's a very famous singer who passed mm -hmm. away. But his name is Sonny Okosun. They have mm -hmm. actually a documentary. Right, my very uncle. famous singer. Yeah, Sonny Okosun, who sang about. He got in trouble for singing about. Uh, it was called a song called "Fire in Soweto" about the South African shit. So he mm -hmm. was pretty rebellious. Then he got religious, mm -hmm. but he was, you know. And we stayed with him, mm -hmm. and he we stayed in a nice fucking place mm -hmm. in Boom Boom Boom. Mm -hmm. And you saw the abject, probably because most of my. Parents, oh, family, we're all poor. Right. Mm -hmm. My father's from a small village called Abba, mm -hmm. and we went there, and I saw my grandparents, and how mm -hmm. the poverty mm -hmm. was like you, American poverty. Right. Shit. Right. 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 At least in America, you could right. go. You know what? I'm gonna get online, go to class, mm -hmm. right. maybe get a job. Man, we have I'm a lot talking. of American privilege. Me, you can yeah. get out of poverty in this bitch. And you spoke about that, <laughs> yeah. and, and when you were talking to Vlad, because yeah. you spoke about. Like how fucked up the countries are. You yeah. like, and they're fucked up because of imperialism. Yes. Like American imperialism, yep. European imperialism. Yep. The end point you were making was that it's stupid for for black immigrants to hate on African Americans because we have the same enemy. Damn right. But what happens with this ADOS thing is that they've, they've taken part of your thing where you talk about what they call us the You talk about Sugar Hill, yeah. the movie where people first when heard Wesley the word. Snipes whooped that dude's ass. Right. That, yeah. And they, you, your your Vlad TV speech is being weaponized against people who are pro-immigrant. Mm. And people are like, well, Godfrey, whose parents are Nigerian, he said they call us Akatas. Right. Now, my, th my thought is the majority of people who do that are not black people. The majority yeah. of people who take something you said yeah, with right. the end result of what you yeah. said are white supremacists trying to sow they're division. Trying to, they, they, I like how they're reversing that because there's some, there's some white small business owners that try to find if they have some black in them so mm -hmm. they can get the benefits of being black. Mm -hmm. Right. They're that fucked up. Right. Where they're like, because they... But for some reason, they scratch their head and wondering why blacks are complaining. Mm -hmm. It's amazing the white delusion right. that happened. But I think it's just, I, I, you know, and I, you know, you sit there and you just go. I remember when Patrice O'Neill, if you know who Patrice O'Neill is, one of the coldest motherfuckers. And that's who I came up with. Unapologetic. Unapologetic. Yeah. And Patrice was my man, like my big brother. He said, 
And one day I remember, and Patrice is a guy who always talks strong, mm -hmm. never, you never see weakness in him. One day mm -hmm. he goes, what the fuck did niggas do to get these fuckers to hate us so much? Mm -hmm. What the fuck did Exist. we do? What did, he goes, because in comedy, like if we, if we really talk about comedy, the legends are black. Mm -hmm. Other than Carlin, Absolutely. the legends are black. When you, you go, when Eddie Murray, you can just name right. Red Fox, right. Drake, Absolutely. Red, and, but it's, it's white male dominated. Mm -hmm. And half these white male comics can't even follow me on any day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any day. Right. I used to go, Dane Cook, when Dane Cook, and, I, and nothing to Dane Cook, that's mm -hmm. my man. But you only But I used to space. follow that motherfucker when he was the hottest shit. They'd be like, who's going next? I said, me. Mm. And I blow that bitch out the water. I go, mm -hmm. you don't even know who I'm trained under, partner. Mm -hmm. You, you right. know who the fuck I fuck with? Right. I was under I, Bruce Lee. I was watching Bernie. He Bernie was would fourth? bring us up third. while motherfuckers were still <laughs> laughing. Right. When mm. you go up and a motherfucker rocks so hard, you go up and the motherfuckers mm. are still like, oh. Uh, what you got to say? <laughs> you be like, give it up for Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck are you mean? Like right. watching DL and watching Cedric the Entertainer, mm -hmm. real killers, like mm. real, like I'm talking destroy rooms, like mm. what? Mm. Standing ovations all the time. Like, so I was like, Dan Cook, I said, come on, man. You, you, who the fuck are you talking to right now? Mm -hmm. Even Chappelle, Chappelle's call is like, we follow Chappelle. That's real shit. Mm -hmm. Chappelle and fucking another guy about it now. I love bringing up Greer Barnes. Greer's no dope. Greer, man. I met Greer through Chappelle years ago. If you're watching this show, yeah. watch Greer Barnes. You want to see a right master. There. You can see him on you YouTube. Wanna see, uh, you want to see yeah. a master of voices and just material, just so crafted. I'm like, this is what I fuck with. Mm -hmm. Bill Burr is one of the coldest Bill Burr. dudes. And I came up with Bill. Yeah. Bill used to do black rooms, partner. Yeah, but Bill Burr does black rooms. And but does stays white. Decidedly white jokes. I have a, uh, that's a real comic. That's a comic, yeah. With not going, hey, raise the roof. Yeah. No, he's not patronizing yeah. us. What's, this, what's all this? And there's some white. Yeah, yeah Bill goes, yeah. Oh, I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm white. You right. fuck? Right. It's confidence. It's Bill being Burr, comfortable Bill, in your... In Bill your, Burr is so confident in his comedy, woo. right? That now he's approaching OG status. Like, he's OG now, right? Mm -hmm. And he's sort of taking on... This tough guy persona. Yeah. But I don't see him as a tough guy. It's just he's so good at what he does. Yeah. You just don't want to fuck with him. You don't want to fuck with him. And yeah. his wife is black. Right. And he always dated black women, but never threw it in in our faces. Right. He never he doesn't do the my wife is black, so But you oh. know how you know how yeah. some people you know, wanna racially they wanna tell you who they're dating racially so they can get in good with you. Yeah, we, they go like there's this, some comics out there that do they that. They go like this, well. Yeah, my wife's black, so I understand your plight. Just right. because you're fucking someone doesn't mean that you're right. solving right. Just you the like racial problem. Look, because sometimes when you fuck somebody, you can like actually it. be putting them down. Right. You're alleged. So, I'm you're, just being you're honest. Alleged, your alleged proximity to people of color does not disprove your racism. In fact, mm -hmm. you thinking it does proves that you're a man, savage I went racist. To, I went, man, I'm from Chicago. I went to mm -hmm. do school. I went to school where white dudes had black girlfriends called you nigga. Right. And be like, you know, you nigga, but my girlfriend's black. Right. And uh, uh, shit. Yeah. Or chink or whatever, but right. the girlfriend's Asian. Shit, I went, a, I went to school with shit like mm -hmm. that, dude. That's why when people go, my, my person, you're not doing us any fucking favors. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you something. If fucking somebody solved... Oh, the racial problem? Then right. the first Radio. black woman that was raped during slavery, we would have all been fucking free. That's right. So I don't want to hear that shit. It would have been Sally Hemmings and then it would have been a rap. You, 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 yeah. you know what I'm saying, yeah. John Mr. So yeah. I don't want to hear that. I hate that fucking, the way people talk. Because right. they don't want to deal with the real fucking issue. They want to do that. Oh, yeah, I right. I listen to hip hop. I uh, You know, you got racist I, people that have jazz collections, man. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Their favorite player is LeBron. Yeah, they Meanwhile, LeBron. he get nigger painted on the side of his nigger. house. And, right. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and it's almost weird because it's like black. We're only that commodity. They only see us athletically, sexually, economically. Well, That's I'm, all they see us as. And anything else, it's like, how dare you, you want to buy a house? How fucking dare you? They, they, I think you want to go to school? What the fuck? You're not playing ball. We need <laughs> you to score touchdowns and dunk. Right. What the fuck are you? Right. You want to go to a grocery store? Yeah, motherfucker. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like the we're not looked at as human, dude. That's on some exactly real right. That's shit. On purpose. When they talk, or when you're in an elevator, sometimes I'm gonna be honest. I don't want a white family to come on the elevator with me. Mm -hmm. I don't want them because to, it because they just look and they, and they do this thing where they smile. Huh, it's a black man. <laughs> yeah, right. well, how about when they do the thing like, what the oh, fuck no, no, no. Is no, you're fine. Yeah, you're I'll fine. Get the next one. Or it's they like, keep saying sorry, like because they think yeah, they're or, the, or, the, or, or sometimes when you walk, you gotta be careful with your body. You know what that's called? That's called black power. 
It, black power. And that's and it, what I was trying to say. I think that, because you were saying earlier, like, why don't they like us or why why do they don't like black people? And I think it's just like a jealousy and a fear because just look at all the things that we've gotten accomplished with, you know, oppression and everything like that. We find a way out of nowhere. We can nigger rig stuff. Nigger rig. That's work, right. And yeah. it's like, I, you can, oh, no, it's very true. We're very resilient. And, but the thing is, we built America. Almost all the inventions are are black. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a there's a new guy. This guy C I forgot C T he, the first guy to invent a car before mm. Ford. Mm. He had his own company for five years. We the remote control GPS is a black woman, Dr. Gladys. She's still mm -hmm. alive. Laser eye surgery is Dr. Bath, who just passed away. Mm -hmm. We invented everything. Uh, uh, Bluetooth is a black woman, of mm. course. Bluetooth <laughs> and, and, and GPS. Where are you at? Mm. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, but we 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 literally invented that. Right. And the highest degrees, black women have the highest degrees in America, mm -hmm. and Nigerians have the highest degrees in America and all over the world. The highest degrees in medicine. It's real. We're mm. we're that good. Right. But then we got all this hatred on us. But we're doing everything for everybody. We forgive them. And religion has fucking brainwashed oh, us yeah. into not fighting for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because George Carlin said this: a white I Irish comic said, the only way blacks are going to get their freedom is you got to start knocking motherfuckers out. Mm -hmm. Because every other race has used violence to get what they want. Europeans have been killing motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. Europeans kill all the Europeans. What mm -hmm. makes you think you ain't going to get fucked up? Yeah, man. You know what I mean? So Carl violence has been the way to get your shit back. Mm -hmm. But then... Black people want to fight each other, though, mm -hmm. in a heartbeat. Black women want to fuck other black women up. Mm -hmm. Black dudes want to fuck other black dudes up. But I go, what happened to that energy when the white dudes was calling us niggas, man? It's Stockholm Syndrome. I, I don't think that that's still an issue, because as I keep saying, like, this generation, I know especially my generation, they're, like, changing that narrative. So I feel like if we keep saying, like, oh, black people want to kill each other, black women want to fight each other, then that's going to keep being... No, no, that's not it. You have to call it out. But, it's but okay. it's, you have to call it out because it's still there, because I'm telling you. you know how when you go to a black function, let's be real. You go to a black function and you go, okay, what's this gonna be like? You know, you hope, you know, and then when you go to a black function, you go, nah, this is dope. Mm -hmm. The vibe was good. Da -da -da -da. If I go to a function that's mainly white, I don't have to worry about no fight. Right. I don't even think about it. Yeah, that's another privileged take. I think both things can, are, are true and both things are necessary. Yeah. It's like the fact is, it's like, and that's what I love about this show. Yeah. So I called it People's Party because what's important is for us to have. Intraracial conversations, right? Intra. That Thank are about you. ourselves. That's like right. Like Malcolm said, you don't air your dirty laundry in public, right? So, but at the same time, in the age of social media, how do we have those conversations? Right. And, and uh, uh, amongst, you know, white people who love hip hop, white people might love Godfrey. You know, yeah. it's important for us to, for the sake of this conversation, right, to say that black on black crime is a myth. Crime is proximity based. Crime that's is based on period. who you grew up around. Right. Crime is based on being poor, poverty, right? That's right. So 86% of black murders are done by black people. 90% of white murders are done by white people. 90% right. mm -hmm. of murders of Asian people are done by other Asians because mm -hmm. that's right. who they around. That's right. But it's also important, and I think that's the point you were making, because yeah. you, you start blaming the victim by saying, man, if niggas would stop acting like niggas. Yeah. But the point that you were making is, mm -hmm. is that personal accountability and self-reliance right. and community right. organizing and takes a village to raise a child, we have to be so, we have to police ourselves. We have to, no doubt. We have to be accountable for ourselves. And that's, those are conversations that we need to have amongst people. And I want to make sure and be, be very, um, I want people to be very clear. One thing I don't do is throw my people under the bus ever. I just like to talk honestly right. to deal with a situation because I'm part of the same problem. I'm part of the same problem. I'm talking in, I, whenever I bring up our little mm -hmm. idios, idiosyncrasy, it's because I'm doing it for a positive reason. Right. Because when so, one day I, mean, I, was do, I was talking about something on stage. And the dude's like, man, why you got to say it out loud? I go, my man, mm -hmm. it's in the public, sir. Mm -hmm. When I'm talking about 10 motherfuckers hanging out in front of a bodega, that's not private. Mm -hmm. They see it. Right. Fuck is wrong with you, bro? Mm -hmm. you, they, I'm talking about some shit people see, especially but, in these gentrified neighborhoods that they're trying to take over. Mm -hmm. They see you standing there in front of the liquor store, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that, we, yes, we see certain things, but also there's uh, like... There's a whole movement of queens fixing each other's crowns and of black course. women having. So I'm saying, let's just talk about more. Oh no, listen, about listen. That. You're right about that. You're of course we call each other kings and queens. Yeah. Of course that shit has been around since the '60s, yo. Yeah. That whole positive Absolutely. thing. But you gotta bring up the ailments too. Right. So you can heal that shit. It's just like with 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 body shit. Mm -hmm. Like. I have cancer. Yeah, you got cancer. We need to deal with that. Mm -hmm. You can't go, can you not really talk about cancer? Talk about, no. Yeah, we got to There's deal with a it. tumor there. Yeah. We need to bring it up so then when it goes away, we go, shit's over. We don't have to bring it up anymore. 
but we have to bring that shit up because it's still right. around. And the way we you know and, I mean? and the way that we bring it up is by adding to that. Yes. Whenever I do, you know, panels or have academic discussions, it's very important that we don't just talk about the problems. Mm -hmm. That's sexy. Yeah. Sexy to talk about what you don't like. Who got the solution? What are right. things we can uplift, yep. particularly in hip hop? The thing that people love to do about in hip hop is complain about how whack everything is mm -hmm. all the time. When I first started my career, the biggest underground hip hop rate records on the radio going platinum were talking about how whack the radio was. We're talking about how everything's whack. That's a part of hip hop. We talk about the ubiquitous MC who's whack, and that's we trying to take this nigga out all the time. Right. right. But I always tell people, you know, yeah, like I always tell people, you spend time telling me all the time all this hip-hop that you don't like. Mm -hmm. What did you buy this year that you did like? Right. Tell me, all right, instead of spending time telling me how much you don't like Lil Pump or whoever's on the radio, tell me about this new Rhapsody album you bought. Tell me about that. So I, I agree with your point is that people need to, we, we do yeah. need that. No, we do need and that. And the different but, eras need to embrace each other. Oh, that's right. yes, and, and that's the other. thing. No, definitely. We, that, yeah, I'm, I'm down right. for that. Like, go ahead. Because just how he was saying, talking about the, uh, the rap survey, there's like, you know, groups or whatever where you have like other comedians and they'll sit there and be like, oh, well, this movie was whack, but this movie was whack, this movie was whack. And it's like, that's unnecessary behavior because there's so many things that you did like or whatever. So that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying brush everything under the rug. Oh, no, no. I, I totally know what you're, what you're saying isn't wrong. What we're saying, nothing is wrong. Right. It's all inclusive. It's just, yeah. it's good we have to, to talk about all of everything. It. It's true. like, it's like, here's an example. With ASAP Rocky. Mm -hmm. saying what he said before, before mm -hmm. he went to jail. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck. I'm not Al Sharpton. I don't mm -hmm. give a fuck about the black problems. Guess what, bro? How are you like that? You yeah. in Sweden. You got locked up in fucking Sweden. Mm -hmm. What the fuck is wrong with you? Did you see a statement that he made when he got out? What, what did he say? He was like, I'm so grateful. Mm. I have a lot to think about. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I, I appreciate everyone. I hope he gets rid me. of ASAP because he didn't get out quickly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's funny now. You know, you know Trump's like, it's, it's funny now. No, it's funny Trump's now. like, you're no longer ASAP, uh, okay? Be, it was a rocky real. situation. Let's be real. You're no longer <laughs> ASAP. It took you forever. Okay. No. <laughs> so listen. I, yeah, so I hope ASAP learned his yeah, lesson, but sure. why does it have to take that? For you to why does it have to take white oppression to make you proud of who you are? Mm -hmm. It's not about being Al Sharpton. It's not mm -hmm. about that. Not oh, there's yeah. a time. There's mm -hmm. people who do that job. There's civil rights people. Mm -hmm. There's just, you be a rapper, but you can still have pride in yourself. You don't mm -hmm. have to always be on a soapbox talking about black. Black shit doesn't have to always be sprouted out. Mm -hmm. It's your actions. I because being black to me is a verb. It's about what you do as a black person. Uh, uh, your pride, not right. throwing us under the bus when you're around company and that dumb shit. And I went to, the, to I went to the anything. White House with ASAP Rocky. Okay, and it was after he had said the things about Ferguson. But he said something to Obama in a room full of rappers, a room, room full of uh, lawyers and people. Yeah. He was like, he said, I'll be true. Because Obama was asking us to help him with his uh, uh, mentorship yeah. program and right. stuff like that. And Rocky was like, I don't know how to do any of this. Mm. He said, I'm trying now to be more responsible as a citizen. Yeah. But I'm a kid from Harlem. Like, I don't know how to be an activist. I don't know how to help You're you. You're a kid from Someone Harlem. Someone please teach me how to you do this. <laughs> Read. Here's another thing about mm -hmm. millennials. I don't know every millennial. I know some that have old spirits. Read your history of where mm -hmm. the fuck you're from. I mean, it's the, important the, to know the brother's name. History. Rakim. That's his real name. You see what He's I'm saying? He's named after Rakim. After Rakim. Yeah. Go talk to Rakim right. first off. Go right. talk to Rakim. Know what your name means. Mm -hmm. Know about the Harlem Renaissance. Yeah. Where you're mm -hmm. from, bro? Mm -hmm. Know that Malcolm right. X stood on 16th and Lennox right. and was preaching. I went right. to the. I, you know, know about mm -hmm. the history of Harlem. Of anything, start off and right. go, yo. At least you threw that out there. Right. Man, read about the history of Harlem, man. Mm -hmm. You have to, read, like I said with comics, if they ask me a question, mm -hmm. they say, well, man, what advice can you give me? I said, first of all, writing's important. Learn about the people that came before you. Mm -hmm. Because you know in stand-up comedy, there's a book, and I tell a lot of comics to get this. It's called On the Real Side, mm -hmm. Laughing, Lying, and Signifying. The history of African American humor from slavery to Richard Pryor, mm. Richard Pryor, and then they re, re, re revamped it from slavery to Chris Rock. It is mm. a fantastic book mm. on how black comics. There was a time we could not be soloists. We had to be in blackface and talk side to side mm -hmm. in dialogue. Now let me it ask you this: It was an insult to face a white audience by yourself. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this: This is real shit. Because I do have a blackface question. Yes. One of my favorite things I've ever seen you do mm. was being Zoolander. Yes. And you played Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller as, as if, a black dude. As if Ben Stiller had put on some blackface. As if, yeah. As if, right? Now, 
you did very well. Like you were essentially doing a Ben Stiller impersonation. Yes, I was. Right? <laughs> but Ben Stiller as Zoolander. Yes. So you were doing a, a black Zoolander. Yes. And it was, it was, it's, it's beautiful. This is a beautiful performance. But I have a, a conspiracy theory mm. that I'd like to try out on you. Okay. I think Ben Stiller is abnormally obsessed with blackface. Mm. Now I say this as a fan of Ben Stiller. I watch all his films. <laughs> yep. I think he's a genius. <laughs> Right, Zoolander, uh, <laughs> September 2000, uh, 2001. Yeah, that movie came out. I think nine eleven. Mm, yes, and right? that's when it didn't make do really good numbers. I saw it in the theater. Right, yeah, it was empty. Yes, because I, I remember going to the theater people in Brooklyn. Are, it's hard and I, and, I, I, and, and you know, Zoolander's become a cult classic since. Cult classic. Then. But I knew seeing it. I remember seeing it the first time I watched Anchorman. I'm like, oh, that's oh, oh yeah. I mean, same, felt, same thing for Zoolander, right? Yeah. And there's a scene in Zoolander when he's mining. Yeah, you know he's, he's yeah. and then he puts the the the, the, the coal on his face, yeah. and he's trying to scare John Voight. He's like, Ooh. Yeah. and John Voight is like, I'm like, that's blackface, that's blackface right? Yeah. So then, Godfrey's doing reverse blackface. Right. Then years later, he does Tropic Thunder, which as a movie I auditioned for. Uh, uh, Brandon T. Jackson got that Brandon part, but I was going, I was doing my audition did. thing. Yeah. Um, Robert Downey Jr. He looked like a black dude. <laughs> I'm that a dude trying to play a dude but, who thinks but, another what's, dude. What's cool, but it wasn't blackface. It was literally real makeup, mm -hmm. and he looked like a black man. Now I'm gonna That's go on. Different. I'm gonna go on record and mm. say that Ben Stiller. I think he's obsessed with blackface, <laughs> but I think as a comedian, he's obsessed with how far can I take it? Take Where it can right. I go? Like, what's which, what's the line? Which is a normal, but yeah, blackface. What people have to understand the history of blackface is fucking disgusting. Mm -hmm. It was downtrodden. Like Jewish comics back in the day, Al Jolson, mm -hmm. Eddie Cantor, they put on blackface. Mm -hmm. You know, Mammy was a famous song. He would go, Mammy. It was right. Jew. It was black, white. Uh, Amos and Andy. It was mm -hmm. white comedians that put on cork mm -hmm. to imitate us with the red lips and the whole nine. It's mm -hmm. a fucked up thing to have you know mm -hmm. i mean remember, remember whoopi goldberg did that shit with ted mm -hmm. dancing mm -hmm. i mean yeah it's 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 fucked up it shouldn't be done but tropic thunder wasn't blackface mm -hmm. because robert downey murdered that shit so what's the metric is the metric is how well you it's, do it's, it's 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 the make it's it's goddamn it get the complexions <laughs> right motherfucker i mean i so for I me <laughs> they made let it me tell like you i dirt. used to work at walgreens mm -hmm. at walgreens i worked at walgreens in chicago mm -hmm. And I remember it was it was Halloween at the time. I worked in the liquor department, and you know people come in buy liquor. This motherfucker walked in, Halloween, uh -huh. came in dreads and blackface. Wow! And I was militant at the time. I used to go <laughs> see Farrakhan uh, okay. um, Savior's Day. Okay. So I'm militant as fuck, mm -hmm. out of college, mm -hmm. read every goddamn book, mm -hmm. and I go, I say, yo, who the fuck are you supposed to be? Mm -hmm. That's what I. That's how I said it. Right. So who the fuck are you supposed to be? Mm -hmm. He's Black. He goes, I'm Bob Marley. You know you <laughs> motherfucking ain't. No, you're not. Nigga. Bob Marley's light skin, first right. off. Yeah. You know, I said, you're not fucking Bob Marley. He said, man, just give me my shit. I said, man, I'll break this bottle and I'll stick it in your fucking face. <laughs> and I and I was about to hit him with a bottle. Chicago Walgreens. Yeah, Chicago Walgreens <laughs> on diversity. I'm, I'm afraid I'm not going to Chicago. And I was Chicago. about to hit him with the bottle. Mm -hmm. And this dude, Muhammad, who looked just like Saddam Hussein, mm -hmm. grabbed the bottle. He's like, no, go to, don't do it. Never, <laughs> no, don't do it. I said, man, I'm going to break his fucking head, man. Mm -hmm. Blackface? Right. The fuck exactly. out! It's disrespectful See, to Bob Marley. I agree. Yeah. I think and it's a disrespectful to any black person to put on blackface. I think when it comes to the films, yeah. For me, the metric is so you know when I go see a, like I brought up the D. L. Hughley talking about Spike Lee was mad at Quentin Tarantino. Yes, I was. I love Spike Lee. He's my hero. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm featured on a song too. called Spike Lee is my hero. Oh, right? Cool. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's, it's, it's very <laughs> literal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I also have an affinity. For Quentin Tarantino, he's one of my favorite directors. I love, I love his movies. I've never had an issue with Tarantino's use of nigger. I think Tarantino has blind spots. I think he could be tone deaf. I think Spike Lee has blind spots. He could be right. tone deaf. No, yeah. But I, as a as a fan of the genres that he does, whether it's you know the spaghetti western or the revenge flick or right. whatever, I understand intellectually what he's doing with those characters exactly. when they use the word nigger. So I'm not offended by, even when it stings and it's cringy, yeah. I'm like, I know what he was trying to do. I know Maybe exactly. he didn't get there on that yeah. one. And so when I saw Tropic Thunder, that's, what, that's how I felt. I was like, Ben Stiller is being very courageous here because it could go into uh, spoof. It yeah. could go into yeah. very derogatory, but I felt like intellectually, yeah. He was able to find the joke. Of course, yeah. And that's why but not everybody felt But the thing felt about it's way. like with that girl who got who's getting the backlash from doing that X X Tacion joke. Uh, mm -hmm. What's her name? She she um, I don't know about this. I don't know what her, her name, name is. is. She's but a Muslim. I just don't she's a Muslim chick and yeah. they got mad at her mm -hmm. 
because she brought, it was a Venmo joke. Mm -hmm. And she goes, Extestacion got killed with $50,000 in cash, and that's a good Venmo commercial, blah, blah, blah. And, and I, but I listened to the joke. Mm -hmm. See, this girl is a, she's a, a joke battle. She's a um, roast, battle? roast battle champion. That's what she be doing. She, she's yeah, she's, she's, she's a dark, mm -hmm. dark comedian. Yeah, that roast battle is like battle rap. Yeah, she, like, you she, gotta she's know. a dark comic. Mm -hmm. But everyone doesn't understand that. But what's fun, but that's all right. But that's the chance you take as a comedian. Oh, yeah. You are who you are. When you're, it's 50-50 before you go on the mic. You go, because I remember doing a joke. When that uh, Virginia Tech dude shot up everybody. Mm -hmm. I did a joke that day. Mm. I said, oh, I got something to talk about. Mm. I said, hey, let me talk about And then people like, it's too soon. I go, for you, I'll let me, shut up and let me talk. I said, the reason, I said, all this killing that's happening, I said, it's not mental disorder. It's us who bully these motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He ain't getting no, I said, disorder. he ain't getting no pussy. Mm -hmm. He ain't fucked in a long time. Yeah. He's angry. And there's a point where the, it, you know, the shit has to stop and nobody's helping them out. Mm -hmm. It's us who's causing the shit. So people are like, oh, I get it. So you I've seen you do chance. that a lot. I've seen you, I've seen you push the audience like, oh, y'all motherfuckers don't want to talk. I've seen you do that a lot. I, I push it. Yeah, you push. And sometimes if a joke goes, mm -hmm. it goes flat, I go, yo, wow, look at the white guild. It just cock blocked the middle <laughs> of the joke. And white people go, oh, shit. Right. I go, you just cock blocked the middle of the joke. Mm -hmm. And I even said that white women are ruining comedy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> white, Not white women comics. White, white women right. are ruining they comedy because culture. the only ones that get up and walk out are white women mm -hmm. all the fucking time. Louis C.K. is mm -hmm. trying to make his comeback. Mm -hmm. I'm around him. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to make his comeback. He has every right to. What do mm -hmm. you want the fucker to do? He didn't mm -hmm. rape him. He wanted to jerk off in front of the girls. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Louis' show is about his sexual deviancy. A lot of his jokes are about That's what he tells you. Yeah. And so, and so women, white women are like, you, what's Louis doing? I go, first of all, Louis has daughters, he has children, he has to make a living. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and he's a comic. He, that's his only way of working. Mm -hmm. He can't play the guitar, he can't do nothing else. That is where you don't respect comedy as an art form. Mm -hmm. it, we are artists. We have to express ourselves through our art. When I was on the Cosby show, his son was murdered that, that year. Ennis. I was there, mm. okay? Cosby came a week later and did a whole joke about his fucking son's burial. People mm. are crying and laughing at the same time. Yeah. How else is he gonna work through it? Yeah, yeah when, com when comics go to each other's funerals, it's like a lot of jokes. There's a lot of jokes mm -hmm. because it's like when D.L. Hughley said about, it was the greatest, it made my skin jump when he said about Bernie Mac. Mm -hmm. He said, Bernie Mac taught me how to be a man. Mm. Like he, he, he was a guy that never, he never uh, compromised his integrity. Mm. He was like that, and it's hard as a black man to actually be a man, like to mm -hmm. be a heterosexual, strong, because it's always a threat mm -hmm. to this to this business. Mm -hmm. Because you know, white people have the dial on blackness. Mm -hmm. They they choose what kind of black they want. Mm -hmm. They go, oh, well, that's a little much. We'll take him. Yeah. <laughs> right. we'll, we'll, I mean, good job, Godfrey, but you just gotta <laughs> dial that down. You got people wondering if their hair's too much. Mm -hmm. Like a black actor's be like, oh, I don't know if I should. I, white kids can come in with a mohawk, mm -hmm. fucking whatever they want. <laughs> and get whatever they want. We gotta mm -hmm. dial our. This is how I was born. What do you want me to do? Not go to the gym? I can't be. My, I can't. Fuck. Mm -hmm. It's like enough already. You know right. what I'm saying? So there's a lot of, of things that should be talked about and mm -hmm. should be addressed properly because oh, we sure. always approach everything the same goddamn way. I'm so tired of that but shit. But you know, there has been um, actors that have, have said, you know, like just women, black women actors, are, for instance, like you don't know if you want to wear your hair natural. Like when I first moved here, it's like, oh, okay, I want to wear my hair natural, but if you wear your hair natural, you're not going to get put in certain oh. roles because oh. until it became popular, then it was like, oh, we only want the black blacks that are wearing their hair yeah, it's, natural it's, because it's, they're it's, this it's type fuck, of black. It's limiting and fucked up, and yeah. then it causes us to start to get mad at each other. Yeah. When someone gets mm. something, it's hard to go, no, good job. You're like, man, why the fuck they give right. a damn? So now we're fighting amongst each other for little Which spaces. Is the whole plan. And that's why that's the whole plan. I'm so happy about this whole. There's that uh, Issa Rae doing you, the though. Black Girl com um, sketch black comedy sketch show. show. Yeah, she has to name show. it the Black Girl Sketch Comedy because yeah. Black women in comedy are ignored. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Issa Rae. Oh yeah, they are ignored. Mm -hmm. Black women comedians. I want to bring up somebody, Marsha Warfield. Oh man, mm -hmm. man, every Black woman comic DC needs Cab. to. Thank you. They mm. need to. Marsha Warfield Seen her was on from the Chicago. Stage. I was too young back Night then. Night Court. But Night Court, yeah, man. She is back out doing comedy mm -hmm. again. She's a lesbian now, she says. Okay. But they, people need to watch Marsha <laughs> Ward. She was in the 80s with right, a cigarette. Can, right. Fucking unbelievable. Marsha Ward. Gorgeous. Warfield. Yes, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You got to look up Marsha Warfield. You got to look up the people that came before you because black women comedians, because it's always about white girls. Mm -hmm. White girls are in all the sketches. White girls mm -hmm. are the front. 
I'm not taking anything from them, but enough of them. Mm. I want to see black women. I want to see some Arab women uh, sketch comedy right. shit. Right. There's a lot of funny people everywhere else. Right. Every time Ali it's Wong women power, Ali Wong is a beast, mm -hmm. man. Oh, Ali, Wa Ali Wong. Ali Wong is so dope. Yeah. That's my homie. Yeah. And her pregnant thing. I'm sorry, Perfect. Amy Schumer. Beautiful. Don't do what she I was know, doing. I was so upset and that she I know did Amy, that. but don't mm -hmm. do that. Stop mm -hmm. stealing that. You know, mm -hmm. stop it. That's her shit. And it's like. It's just they're not. It's just un. It's unproportionately still racist as fuck. And enough of that. Mm. Enough of that shit. Like let's see black women comedians and some black. I want to see black women comedians that are different. I don't want to talk about how good your pussy is. <laughs> enough yeah, of that. Right. Man, I got that good pussy. Right. Because right. there's so many different oh, types of black enough. women. Enough. And There's they so just many... want to have the, the right. one type. It's like, okay, this is what we want right and now. And shout out to my girl, just... Marina Franklin, another fan. And I went to college with her. You got to watch her on her Instagram. Marina Franklin, a fantastic comedian. Very subtle, very not yelling all over the place. And, and then she's still trying to get her shit. And she's been doing it damn near 17, 18 years, mm -hmm. Marina right. Franklin. So we need to recognize people like yourself. And black women should be recognized. Arab women should be recognized. Mm -hmm. Asian mm -hmm. women comedian Helen Hong, mm -hmm. one of my good friends, fantastic comedian. Yeah. Enough of, and nothing wrong. White girls, listen, I get it. <laughs> but but like enough of you. Yeah. Fuck. Um, I grew up watching TV. Yes. And watching sitcoms and watching mm, Cosby of course. shows and, and loving commercials and yes, knowing all the jingles. Yes. And I grew up on Jeffrey Holder. Doing ha, 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 ha. The uncola. Jeffrey Holder, the uncola. <laughs> right. You essentially took over that role. I I, I was the seven up guy after um, Orlando Jones. Orlando Jones. Shout out to Orlando Jones. Yes. That's a good friend of mine. Yes, a writer, yeah. fantastic yeah, man. dude. Great guy. I never met him. If you've never oh we he's a good hang. Is he he lives in South Carolina. What? Yeah, he's a, a he only comes here for work. If you ever right see uh, uh American Gods season oh, one. Man. Okay. He, there's a, a scene with Orlando Jones, I'm telling everybody who's watching, he, he plays a Nancy the Spider uh -huh. on the slave ship, giving uh, Africans advice for what they should do when they get to wow, America. Wow, yeah. It's a great performance. And I, I, I did 7 Up after him, and right. it was kind of, because you know, he had Sugar Ray Leonard. A lot of, it was very funny, because mm -hmm. 7 Up is a southern drink. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the, the Dr. Pepper 7 Up company mm -hmm. in the south. And a lot of black people have always been the faces of 7-Up. Mm -hmm. CeeLo Green, right. Orlando Jones, Sugar Ray Leonard, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I was, I had the pleasure of getting the gig. It right. Because it's hard to get, it's hard right. to be a spokesperson for a product. I've heard and you to, talk about that being important to you. Are you being proud of the fact that you're part of Yes, of American, American culture. culture. Hell yeah. 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 Hell, I when I got that shit, I was like, man, I'm fucking pushing a product. This right. is great. Because, <laughs> you know, in commercials, right. it's hard to get, you know, because everybody and their mom is an actor now. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. I mean, motherfuckers that Ain't were never acting camera. and you've been busting your ass and they're like, hey, I'll, I'm doing mm -hmm. it to a mm -hmm. mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're like, really? <laughs> that Fuck, what man. Doing? <laughs> it's, it's, it's fucked up because you're like, this is my, this is a real craft. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, excuse, I didn't want any money. I was busting ass with no dough. I was just happy mm -hmm. to do this. But it's hard. It's it's a numbers game, mm -hmm. and when you can get something and be part of American culture forever, it's mm -hmm. a fucking pl it's a privilege, man. Because right. you grow up watching commercials and and singing commercials, and then mm -hmm. you're 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 in it, and people are like, "Wow, I loved your commercial. It's fucking great." Right, right, you right. You know, there's some dope. good things about America. That's damn dope. it, there's <laughs> a lot of good things about no, America. Of course, there's a lot, lot of things. To, Other than the, 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 the no, the big. race part. Listen. Most of the shit that we complain about, mm -hmm. it's about white male supremacy. Yeah. That's all this shit is. We've never all been the honest about it. All the organizations that we're forming, the Black History Month, the Essence magazines, the Latino, it's all because white male supremacy. Mm -hmm. That's all the fuck it is. Mm -hmm. Period. Plain and simple. When we, people go, what we need to do is we need to find more diverse. It's white men right. not giving up anything. Right. They still Period. own everything. It's the same rich white Diverse. Men that it's own like everything. diversity. Right. Diversity the top one percent. The top one percent. Yes. Is ninety six percent white. Dude, the, the fucking purpose. Senate is 97. Right. It's all white. And it'll go like this. That's not true. The fuck are you talking it's about? True. It is what it is. And they we, own everything. It's if you just, yeah, own up to it. Mm -hmm. Listen, man, when I hear diversity programs, sometimes I do this, I'll do like some, you'll do diversity shows. Mm -hmm. I go, and, and, and one time I did a diversity show, and the first thing I said on the mic, I said, a diversity show? Diversity program? That's like a rehab for the Klan. <laughs> fuck are you talking about? You need a program to just go, Let's be fair. But yeah. that's it doesn't that's take ridiculous. a program. That's it's how just you know a decision. Just that's the it. whole game though. That's how you know. It's like if we need to legislate, mm -hmm. if we need to create laws, if we need to set up to be like, listen, <laughs> just do how they taught you to do in kindergarten. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just share. And that means 
And it's really do. bad. Yeah, listen, I understand if you're at the top, you want to kind of keep most of the shit. I get that. Mm-hmm. Even like if you're a ball player, I ain't letting you take championship. You got to get it from me. Right. Well, let me get a chance to play. Give me a chance to Let's play. Let's get on an equal playing That's field. That's all. Let's, Let's level the playing field. Yeah, don't yeah. be like excluding because I used to, I have a joke where I go, white people's skill is they're they're good at excluding people. Mm-hmm. They don't have any other talents. <laughs> they're just good at not like including one. you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it, and, and we all know there's talented white people. Let's right. not be stupid. There's talented white folks and there's shitty black talent. Right. You know, right, right, let's right. be real. But I'm just saying, like, it's, right. you're good at excluding people. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, you know. so, like, if you play on an even playing field, you see what happens. You see what happens in sports. Oh, you know what comedy. And comedy. <laughs> Come on, man. Right. Or music. <laughs> yeah. Yo, yo, right. Yo. right. Or martial arts. Mar- Whew. So, talk Damn about right. martial arts. Well, martial arts started in Africa, by the way. Mm-hmm. And people don't understand because they go, what do you mean it started in Africa? I go, let's be logical. Mm-hmm. Let's just be logical. Let's just use fucking Now, for context, I know I'm not supposed to say that I Wikipedia'd Godfrey because I really do know him. Yeah. Right? And I know that he's into martial arts, but yeah. in your Wikipedia it says he is a self styled martial arts master. Know, where the fuck? So, the Wikipedia <laughs> just puts to, anything they, they, like just, to they just put whatever they want. Continue to speak on martial a arts. Self styled? Hey, <laughs> so. <laughs> what is that style? Uh, that's what I wanted to know. I'm from New York. Rap. <laughs> I don't know. Fuck. That style. Where you get that style from? <laughs> well, think, think about it. Someone had to make up martial arts. Mm-hmm. Someone made this shit up. But no, I studied Hapkido for like 10 years. We, as, as, as young men, we love martial arts, period. Mm-hmm. We just mm-hmm. love martial arts because it's fucking mm-hmm. cool. But martial arts started in Africa. They say, well, China. I said, no. For, first of all, I go, we were on the planet first. Mm-hmm. So you think we didn't throw a the kick? The original man. Did we throw the a original kick? Asiatic you know, black man. Right. We didn't throw a kick like one time. <laughs> we were on the planet thousands right. of years. We didn't go like right. this. Right. There was shit. We didn't go like nature that. Nature around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We didn't go like this. Right. We didn't go like There was probably a, a martial arts in Africa that was whack as shit, but the motherfucker was like, you know what I mean? And of course it changed as we moved. We, because you know, black people are transformers. We turned mm-hmm. into every other race. We mm-hmm. went into Asia. We turned Chinese. Right. You know what I mean? I grew we up went in Brooklyn. And I had to run away from the Decepticons. Y- y- you know? You know what I mean? <laughs> we, 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 we. Every it came from Africa because mm-hmm. there's writings on walls that it did come from Africa. Mm-hmm. There was African types of wrestling and all that shit. That's the, if if martial arts came from China or fucking Ireland, I would be like, okay. Mm-hmm. But the truth is, it came. Every damn it, they don't fucking pissing came eat, from they. Africa. We peed first. We shit first. The original we man. First. We breathed Lucy, first. The Skeleton they found in there. They just don't want to give us our props because they know how powerful it will be once we realize. So black well, people start realizing. Yeah, well, now we have to take it upon ourselves to really just study and just read about mm-hmm. your past because it does push you to the future. Because then when people react to you a certain mm-hmm. way, you go, oh, I know where this is coming from. Mm-hmm. You got, I call it cerebral kung fu. Mm. Like, it's like with martial arts. I study mm-hmm. martial arts under some cold motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. All black martial artists from Harlem. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to my master, David Herbert. Us. Mm-hmm. My, uh, Master David Herbert, he studied Korean martial arts, Fifth Don and Sanukas Ryajitsu, J- Ryajitsu, which was created by Moses Powell from the from Harlem. Mm-hmm. That's what Wesley Snipes studied. Mm-hmm. So it's like they always told you, because once you learn martial arts, you have body intelligence. Mm. You always looking around, you always not saying you're gonna kick everybody's butt, but you at least feel confident, like if something happens, I can do something. Yeah. It's the that. same thing when I say learn your history, man. Read about what's going on. Read about shit from the past. Read your James Baldwin mm-hmm. and your Tony oh, yeah. Morris's. And, right. and read it. Because right. when someone goes and says, you fucking nigger, you go, oh, I know where that's coming from. Right. You're not going, <coughs> they right. call me nigger, man. What the fuck am I going to do? Cerebral martial arts. I get it. Mm-hmm. I know where you're coming from. You can always, you can already read what they're going to say to you mm-hmm. because your knowledge the fuck up. Right, you knowledge yourself. Exactly. Knowledge that's yourself. Right. Cypher, man. Lord, shout out to Lord Jamar. And that's why Rakim says, I like your intelligence. He's, yeah. Give it up for God for you. Man, thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yo, beautiful show, brother. Thank you, brother. Good time.